Hi everyone, uh, this is Chris from Sonar Talent Intelligence. And today we're gonna to walk through a pretty simple process to help uh, HR and TA leaders match their headcount planning process to their recruiting capacity. Uh, the idea here is to try and figure out how many recruiters do I need in order to hit the rec uh, goals that I have for the year? And then um, how can I kind of run this process really on a, on a regular cadence, probably monthly or quarterly to see how I'm tracking towards a goal. Uh, so I've tried to keep the process really simple um, and with a lot of kind of manual edits. Uh, so it's not really tied to any, any kind of data inputs. A large organization or with a people analytics team, you'll probably have those capabilities. But the idea here is that anyone should be able to use this uh, tool and just get a kind of a very quick gut check on how they're going to be able to accomplish their kind of end of year uh, recruiting goals. So uh, I'm going to jump into this uh, process right now. A lot of people have requested uh, this, and this is actually built on uh, some of the early work that we've done where we were just showing how to, to uh, build a very basic capacity model. Uh, but now we're actually really starting to link together the, the headcount planning process. So uh, we're going to start with the headcount planning process because that's normally what comes first. And normally uh, that would that would um, come from a finance team. So you'd have the kind of CFO and their team who would project headcount forward based on budgetary requirements and kind of pass that off to the recruiting organization. So um, if you already have that, that's great. Um, if you don't, you can actually just make a rough assumption. What I used to do is look back over this over the previous few years and then figure out what is the kind of like monthly headcount growth that you would normally expect and kind of just add that in to give a forward looking projection. Similarly, we also need the attrition numbers. So again, we can look at um, kind of what historic attrition looked like across the team that we're modeling for. Uh, and then project that forward, assuming that nothing's really going to change. Again, if you have a really good people analytics team, they're probably doing this modeling for you. So just being able to pull that into this kind of sheet in this format will be really helpful and give you more accurate uh, data to go off. And so we'll start here with uh, the, the inputs. So we talked about the assumptions and they're um, down here. And that's the uh, multi attrition and multi headcount growth. And the only other thing that you're going to be uh, adding in at this point is the starting headcount. And so assume that starting headcount here for the simplicity is 500. So a 500 um, person organization or company or team um, will uh, then have very easy figures to, to start off with attrition and, and headcount growth. And so the way that this model is, is built is that you can just enter the starting headcount and everything else should be calculated based on the assumptions that you add in. So again, the yellow fields are data inputs, green fields are all calculated, and the purple fields, <clears throat> excuse me, are the key metrics uh, that you want to be tracking to, to see how you're progressing towards, towards the goals. So in this case, we have 1% uh, monthly attrition, 1% monthly headcount growth. So you can see how this plays out over time where you know, we start off with 500 heads. If you grow that by 1% each month, um, that incrementally reaches 563 um, by the end of the, the 12 month period. But you also have to account for attrition. And if we're looking at attrition rates of 1% of the current organization, uh, that's then going to trickle through um, to give you the number of open requ requisitions that you're going to have to fill each month. Uh, so in this case, we have five people leave the organization. We actually want to grow the overall team by five. And so that gives us 10 open recs that we're expected to fill in January, or at least open. Uh, let's assume that we're filling nine of them. And that's actually where the capacity model comes in. Um, so we're actually going to have 504 by the end of the period. So that's actually not too far off the goal headcount. We only have a backlog of one. Um, but what you can see is that we're consistently not able to meet the number of open recs. And that's where this backlog really starts to build up over the course of the year. So what may be a short backlog in January, February, March actually becomes a, a much larger one by the end of the year. Uh, normally by that point, it's too late to really do anything about it um, as you have to think about increasing recruitment capacity. So the idea here is that by taking this approach, we can prevent that from happening. Um, and so once we have the, uh, the kind of baseline assumptions in here, we're going to click through to the recruiter capacity tab. Uh, and what this shows you is a pretty um, kind of basic reverse funnel analysis into requisition loads across the recruiting team, and then how that capacity will play out over this 12 month period. Um, and so at the top one, um, all I've got here is we're essentially just trying to calculate what is the expected number of hires that each recruiter is gonna make each month for all the different roles that we may be hiring for. And we've used three here for simplicity. So we have like entry level or volume based hiring. Uh, we have business roles and we have technical roles and the funnels are gonna be different for every hire. Um, for each of these. So you can calculate this, you can look at the activity time that each one of these uh, processes take. So it takes you know, one minute to review a resume, times by a thousand, it'll take a thousand minutes um, of 
prospect resume review time um, to make one hire in the entry level hiring as, as an example. Um, utilization, we look at how much time recruiters are actually spend recruiting. 80% is probably a little aggressive, uh, but we're going to, we're going to just uh, go with that for this model. And then uh, estimating the total rec load over the course of the 12 months. Uh, right now, we've got 125. And um, what you'll actually see is this number is going to go up in a few minutes when we make some uh, changes to the assumptions. Because uh, if you note that there's 125 recs, we actually only have capacity to fill 108. Uh, and then when we look back to the headcount forecast, we can see the backlog is 16. And that's because we're we're kind of really not filling all the recs that we, we have. And you can actually see that charted out here. So you can see how the goal headcount and the estimated headcount diverge over time and the backlog that's created along the bottom here. Um, so what we want to do is think, okay, if we've got 125 recs to fill and we only have 108 um, able to be filled by the five recruiters we currently have mapped to the team right now. So we probably want to think about adding an extra recruiter. And you can change these names. I just uh, create an alphabetized list here. But let's say we add 17 recs uh, to a new recruiter on the technical side because we know that team actually has a lot of demand. So we'll add those in and you can see that the total number of recs um, that we can fill is now going up to 125, which kind of meets that requirement. But you'll see that the total recs that we actually need to fill has gone up by two. And the reason that happens is because this, this model will then start to add in the additional recs that you're going to fill at the start of the year. And because attrition is based on the size of the organization, and the organization is increasing at a faster rate, you actually wind up with an extra two um, net backfills because of the, the kind of roll on effect of that. Um, so that's just um, something to be aware of. It's something to, to kind of really worry about. And what you can see with that extra recruiter now, the goal and estimated headcount are really tracking very closely. Um, the backlog is very small, uh, and that makes a lot of sense because we actually plan the recruiting capacity to meet the expected demand. And so, um, you know, we can be pretty confident we're going to hit our numbers. Um, but what, what you would do really over the course of the year is start to add in actuals into this table here. So, um, you know, we started with 500 and we, we had a goal of 505. So the estimated headcount at the end of January will be 505. If you find that's actually 506 or 504, you can make the adjustments in this field here. And that will really start to kind of like give you that incrementally updating monthly view. Um, so that you, can, you can very quickly see if you have too much or too little recruiting capacity and actually do something about it before it becomes a huge problem. Um, so hopefully that was helpful. Um, the only other thing to call out is this capacity tracker at the bottom here where you can see how um, different demand of, of time, how, how much backlog each recruiter is expected to have over the course of the year. And this is just an accumulation of all the different reps they've got to hire for. Um, this is helpful because you may find that, um, let's say you've only assigned Brian 15 recs, so he's actually going to run out of work by uh, month eight, by August. Um, and so this is helpful if you uh, you know, have someone who's putting a notice or is going on parental leave. So you can actually plan for the capacity that they've got to hit um, over the period that they're going to be in office. But then also think ahead at how you're going to potentially backfill or redistribute roles that um, they otherwise would have filled. Um, so that's one thing to just be aware of. Uh, if you have any more questions, you need any more help, um, we do have a contact page on our on our website. I'm happy to answer any questions or um, create topics for further deep dives in the future. But if you also are interested in trying out our platform, which is really designed to bring a lot of these tools together and actually help you to just execute on the plan uh, with tailored recommendations, again, please reach out. We can uh, definitely have a conversation, see if that's something we can do. Uh, that's our business. That's what we're, we're, uh, we're building here. So um, hopefully that was helpful. I'm pretty excited to uh, kind of continue down this path as we're starting to build out more of the, uh, more of the tools and the features. Um, always open to feedback and, and just happy to connect with the community. Thanks very much and uh, hope you have a great day.